Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you today, continuing on the theme of optimization problems that I've done throughout the week and have a couple more coming out throughout the week. But today we're going to be going through this problem here. So the problem we have is if 1200 centimeters squared of material is available to make a box with a square base and an open top, find the largest possible volume of the box. So this problem is a little bit confusing when you first read it. What I would recommend doing when you first see this kind of problem is draw what is being explained here. Very similar to the other optimization problems I've done this week, we're gonna wanna come up with two equations. One is gonna be the equation that we want to maximize to make the volume as large as possible. And the other equation that we're gonna wanna come up with is our restriction that is given based on kind of our limitations in the problem. In this case, we know that we only have 1200 square centimeters of material to make this box. So that's gonna come into play with our restriction. But actually coming up with the equation for that is gonna be kind of tough if you don't know really what we're looking at. So what I'm gonna start with is drawing a sketch of what we're dealing with. So we know that we are using this material to construct a box with a square base and an open top. So let's just say we have a box that looks like this. And we know that our base is a square. So this side and this side are both gonna be the same length. We can just call that X. And then let's just say that our box is Y units tall. So we have a square base here because both of the sides that make up the base are the same length, which makes it a square. And then obviously the height of the box could vary, you know, kind of separately from the base. And then we also know that the top is open. So what that means is we only need material to make four sides of the box. We have the front side, the right side, the back side, and then the left side over here. And then we also need material for the bottom. So what you wanna do is think about the total amount of material that's gonna be used based on this box. So we know that we have 1200 square centimeters of material and we're gonna be, need to make five sides of this box if we count the bottom as well. And the total area of those five sides of the box, we, we wanna add up and those are gonna add up to 1200. So this bottom side is just gonna be X times X, right? The area of a square is just the side lengths multiplied by each other. So that'll give us X squared. And then each of these other four sides are all gonna be rectangles with one side being X and the other side being y, right? So the area of each of these other four sides is gonna be x times y. And we know that we have four of those sides. So the total area of all four of those other sides is gonna be four x, y. So the total surface area or the total material needed to make this box is gonna be x squared plus four x, y. And again, we don't have to worry about the top because it's an open top. Since we have 1200 units of material available, we know that all this has to add up to 1200. So this is our equation that kind of gives us our restriction that we're dealing with. Now what we want to also do is think about what is the function that we're going to be making as large as possible. Well, it tells us that we want to find the largest possible volume of this box. So the equation that we need to maximize is the volume. Well, what is the volume of this box? The volume of any rectangular prism is just the width times the length times the height of the box. So basically this side times this side times this side will give us our volume, which is X times X times Y, which is X squared times Y. So the volume of this box is X squared Y, which we'll just call this our function of X and Y. It's a multivariable function at this point. And just like I've done in my other optimization problems, we're gonna use this to simplify this down to a single variable equation so that we can apply some of the optimization techniques that we've gone over. So I'm just gonna erase all this and make some room up here now that we've kind of written this out in mathematical equation form. All right, so just like we've done in some of the other videos that I've done in the last few days, all we need to do is take this restriction equation and we're gonna solve it for one of our variables. In this case, the variable that we only have one of is y, so that's probably gonna be easier to solve for. And then we're gonna take that and plug it into this equation and we'll go from there. So let's take this equation here and get y all by itself. So the first thing we would wanna do is subtract x squared over to the other side. So that'll give us 1200 minus x squared equals 4xy. And now if we wanna get y all by itself, we'll just divide both sides by 4x, and that'll give us 1200 
minus x squared all over 4x equals y. So now we can take this value for y and we can plug it into this other equation down here and turn it into a single variable equation. So if we do that, that'll give us a single variable equation of x, which is equal to x squared times y. But we know y is equal to all this, so we can replace our y with all this stuff. So we'll get 1200 minus x squared all over 4x. So this is our function that represents the volume of our box in terms of just x, right? So now it's just f of x because it's a single variable function. And this is the function that we wanna make as large as possible. So that basically just means we need to figure out where our critical number is, or in other words, what x value makes this function as large as possible. And then we'll be able to use that to figure out what the dimension of y has to be that would line up with that based on the material that we have available. So before figuring out the critical numbers of this function, let's just simplify it and you know take a, a look at it. So <clears throat> first of all, if we have x squared times all this stuff here, uh, this x in the denominator here will actually cancel with one of our x's out here because it's being multiplied. So this two will cancel out and this x will cancel out. So we're just gonna have x times all this stuff over four. What you could also think about is pulling out the four to make it a one fourth in front. And so now we just have one fourth X times the stuff here. So let's kind of simplify it, distribute that throughout. We're gonna get one fourth X times 1200, which one fourth times 1200 would be 300. And then we have our X and then one fourth times one fourth X times negative X squared will give us negative one fourth X cubed. So now we know this is the function that we are trying to make as large as possible. <clears throat> so to figure out where it's as large as possible, we need to take find the critical numbers, which just means take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So to find the derivative of this function, we'll be able to just use the power rule. The derivative of 300x is just gonna be 300. And then the derivative of negative 1 4 x cubed, we'll bring the three down in front, lower the power by one, will give us negative 3 4 x squared. And then we need to set our derivative equal to zero and solve for x to find our critical number. So we can subtract 300 over to the other side. And then we can multiply both sides by negative four thirds, right? Just the reciprocal of this to move it over to the other side. Negative 300 times negative four thirds would give us 400. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get x equals 20. So we know x equals 20 is the critical number of this function f of x, right? We could go through a handful of different tests to determine if that's a maximum or a minimum, but just on the assumption that it's the only critical number of this function probably tells us that that is gonna be the number that we're looking for. And I'm not going to do it here, but if you did run some of those tests to determine if that was a maximum or a minimum, you would find that that would be where our maximum occurs. So now what we can do is we can take this X value because we know this is the X value that will make our box have the highest volume possible. And we can take this and plug it into our equation that we found for Y right here to figure out what our Y value is. So if we do that, we would get 1200 minus x squared, which is 20 squared, over four times 20 equals y, which if we simplify this all down, 20 squared is 400. So 1200 minus 400 is 800. And then four times 20 is 80. And eight, 800 divided by 80, these will cancel. 80 divided by eight is 10. So y equals 10, x equals 20 are the dimensions that would make this box. So we want this box to be 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters, which will use 1200 square centimeters of material and it would make the volume of the box as large as possible. But remember what the question asked us was to find the largest possible volume. So what we need to figure out is the actual volume, right? If we have 
20 by 20 by 10, we could multiply all those together to give us the volume of that box, which would be 4,000 cubic centimeters, right? 20 times 20 is 400 times 10 would be 4,000 cubic centimeters. So that would be the maximum volume of the box.